It's good to have you back. Now, people have been told to leave their homes on the Yaksuke River in Alexandra. The river poses a danger after swelling with days of rain. But for more on this, we speak now to the spokesperson for the Johannesburg Emergency Services. That's Mr. Robert Marawazi. Mr. Marawazi, thank you so much uh, uh, for your time and good morning. I suppose not a good one for the residents of Alexandra. I mean, them being told to vacate immediately from the Yaksuke River. What are the reasons? Uh, Oh, good evening, uh, good morning, Tumelo, uh, uh, and, and morning to uh, the viewers. Yes, last night uh, uh, we had to uh, evacuate uh, about 11 um, uh, residents of Sitwetsa uh, uh, area in Alexander. Uh, the reason was that uh, the two houses were affected by the uh, severe thunderstorms which we had uh, overnight. So, for safety reasons, we had to uh, evacuate them because uh, of uh, their safety and also uh, the water levels was, was much more higher. Uh, and then it was risky for us to leave them there uh, without making sure that they are much more safer. However, uh, this morning we conducted another inspection in the area. The water levels are much more lower at this stage as we speak. So uh, the residents uh, should be able to go back to the area. However, in terms of us being are on high alert, we still continue because uh, the areas which are mostly on uh, uh, the low-lying areas on a flood line, it's not only the uh, Alexander area, but uh, we also have areas like uh, uh, Deep Slot, we have areas like um, a Clip Town in Soweto, which, of course, our residents are residing just along uh, the river streams. So uh, we are concerned about uh, that situation. Uh, because uh, we might also have incidents of drowning. Mm. Uh, since young kids now are at home, school holidays, the, the, they might be tempted to play next to these areas. So as and when uh, there's a need for us to alert our uh, residents out there for evacuation purposes, we will be able to do so. But so far, uh, we can confirm that uh, the water levels in most of the, our uh, river streams throughout the city are much, are much more lower, mm. but will continue to be on high alert. Yeah, but, but, but also, Mr. Marawzi, understanding obviously perhaps even the, um, you know, the, the, the financial situation most of these people might be in living in those areas, how sustainable is it for them to keep going back and forth uh, to living in that area? Is it sustainable long term? Is it safe long term? Like you mentioned, even with possibilities of children perhaps, you know, being uh, curious enough to swim around the banks? Yeah, in, in, in this situation, Ostumelo, it's, it's difficult, you know, uh, mm. because they actually need a place to stay. And then from our side, we, uh, as emergency services, we, it's not our jurisdiction to say we can't be able to uh, organize uh, another safer area. But I think our colleagues from uh, housing and other stakeholders will be able to look at, at the, the, their situation. But for now, from our side, working together with our local councillors, we are making sure that... Uh, uh, they are informed about the dangers of being there in that mm. area, uh, uh, because we still having uh, you know um, you know persistent uh, rainfalls, which we are told we must still get uh, throughout this week. So uh, we have conducted our uh, disaster preparedness evacuation procedures with the residents in the mm. area, uh, so so that uh, as and when there's a, a need for us to evacuate them we can be able to evacuate them. Hence, maybe for the other people who might be actually be thinking of building in these uh, areas like this, which are flood lines, I think it's, 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 we're discouraging them to do that because as and when we have rainfall, even if we have, we have a day rainfall, right. Mello, we still have uh, situations where our residents are stranded. But for now, we, we, we continue to monitor not only the area of uh, uh, Alexander, but... Uh, Areas uh, like uh, Clip Town, areas like Deep Slot, Kayasen, mm. which are mostly uh, the flood line. And then to make sure that uh, we can assist uh, w together with our disaster management officials uh, to make sure that uh, those affected residents are, are assisted. Right. And you will know that uh, in, the next two, in the next two days also, uh, uh, we're still uh, going to heads, heads, uh, uh, have our hands uh, uh, tied because of... Uh, uh, we have a situation where our residents will be also be celebrating the new coming year. Right. We know that uh, we, we, every time you are interviewing myself here, talking about the dangers of uh, parents uh, letting young kids use fireworks. So we, 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 we are on our knees 
uh, aging our residents out there not to leave uh, young kids' fireworks to ignite during the New Year celebrations uh, so that we can minimize the incidents which might occur uh, during this uh, a coming New Year celebration right. festivities. And I think that's a very fair warning that you're making there to adults, to residents, uh, to children, uh, families watching our conversation at this point, to please keep safe. Uh, but if we could just backtrack now to particularly around the Christmas uh, you know, time, uh, Christmas Day, Boxing Day, any incidents uh, that you, you, you saw yes. on the increase? Mm. Yes, we, we have had a number of incidents. Of course, people were moving from one destination to the other, uh, and it was raining. We have had a number of incidents of uh, motor vehicle accidents, which you were, were to respond to. Of course, most of them, you see that uh, uh, most of the motorists were driving, you know, on high speed. Uh, therefore, they couldn't be able to uh, control uh, their uh, vehicles. I mean, we have had an um, uh, incident in, uh, on the Golden Highway where actually... Uh, about three people actually lost their lives in that incident. So, and then over and above that, we have had a number of incidents which uh, 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 we had to attend to, uh, mostly motor vehicle accidents. Mm. I think in terms of the fire incident, we have had a lesser number of, of, of fire incidents which we had to respond to. But now, in the next two days, we know that uh, when our residents will be celebrating the New Year, we will have a lot of incidents which are related to uh, fireworks, you know, yeah. Most of the adults losing their hands, some injuring their legs, things like that. So, uh, uh, and also our residents need to be aware that, uh, according to the city of Johannesburg, we've got a bylaws which regulates uh, the safe use of fireworks. Right. Uh, our residents are only permitted to use these fireworks uh, an hour before midnight, which is between 11 and 12, and also between 12 and 1. Oh. That's in, uh, 1 in the morning. So an hour before midnight and an hour after, and then also on the New Year's Day, they can also use them uh, between uh, 7 and 10 in the, e in the evening, and that's it. From that time, they are not allowed to uh, use these fireworks. And All of right, course, from our side, yes. we'll be continuing with our, with our uh, compliance uh, campaigns to uh, make sure that our uh, dealers and wholesalers uh, comply with our uh, fire services bylaws. All right, we'll have to leave it there and I appreciate you uh, sharing this information. Quite important, uh, given that we're still under strict lockdown, we still have to abide by those bylaws and regulations at this time. And I appreciate you reminding us of what's important to keep us uh, safe in, uh, of course, this country. Mr. Robert Morales, the Johannesburg Emergency Services uh, spokesperson, just informing us there uh, on how to keep safe, of course, to avoid any fatal incidents or injuries uh, during this festive season.